Lest we forget, purple poppies represent animal remembrance. Courtney McClure, The Standard, Port Perry. Did you know purple poppies are worn during Remembrance Day to show recognition for the animals who served during wartime? Another poppy color you may see during Remembrance Day is white poppies. White poppies symbolize civilians who died during the war and represent the desire to spread peace instead of war. Jody Urquhart, owner of the Ridges Tack Shop in Port Perry, will be receiving about 30 homemade knitted purple poppies to remember the horses and other animals used during times of war. Ms. Urquhart said the Tack Shop is also giving out stickers and if people want to leave a donation, she would greatly appreciate it. The poppies are being made by a local mom who said she loves animals. The proceeds for the poppies are going to a non-profit organization called Heaven Can Wait for Equine Rescue. The organization is primarily a horse and equine rescue located in Cameron, Ontario. Heaven Can Wait was created by Claire Malcolm and April Brown in 1997. April and Claire lived in close proximity to one another when they both lived in Blackstock. We decided on the Heaven Can Wait name as we wanted something saying horses weren't ready to go yet. Their time wasn't up yet. They deserved a better fate. Heaven can wait another day for them, explained Miss Malcolm. They have found over 1,800 new homes for horses and ponies since it opened. It has also helped other animals such as pigs, llamas, alpacas, and many more. Ms. Malcolm said there are currently nine horses available for adoption. Magic, a 21-year-old registered Arabian mare, and Peyton, a 15-year-old buckskin pony gelding, to name two available equines. Heaven Can Wait is always happy to accept donations of hay, supplements, halters, tack, and other usable supplies. They stopped taking volunteers during COVID-19, but Ms. Malcolm hopes to start accepting volunteers again next year. Another way you can help Heaven Can Wait is by sharing their posts on Facebook at Facebook at Heaven Can Wait for Equine Rescue. Horses were one of the most common animals used during World War I and II. At the start of World War I, the British Army had about 25,000 horses. Still, horses weren't the only animals doing their part during the war effort. There were also pigeons, dogs, and even glowworms. Homing pigeons were used to send messages between soldiers while in the trenches. The British Defense of the Realm Act made it illegal to kill or injure one of these birds. The Allied and Central Powers used dogs to deliver messages too. Dogs were ideal because they could easily move through the trenches and battlefield. Their excellent sense of smell made them great allies in finding wounded soldiers as well. Soldiers collected many glowworms and put them into tiny jars and used them as a light source in the trenches. Approximately 9 million animals were used for various reasons during World War I. To learn more about the Ridges Tack Shop, please visit their website at theridgestackshop.com. Municipal election voting process now open in Kawartha Lakes. Dan Kearns, The Standard, Kawartha Lakes. The voting period is now open in the city of Kawartha Lakes for the 2022 municipal election. On Friday, October 14th, city staff held an official launch of the online and telephone election process inviting media, candidates, and scrutineers to council chambers to view the online portal and ask questions. The portal started in a zero-vote position, but quickly grew to 16 votes within minutes of the launch and continued to rise. But, for security and democratic reasons, the portal did not provide information on which candidates received those votes. One attendee questioned why the city did not allow any advanced poll or mail-in paper ballot opportunities in this election. While stressing this was a decision this term of council made, Clerk Kathy Ritchie also pointed out, due to the likely low number of requested paper ballots, there would be an issue of voters' right to secrecy. If you have paper ballots, and you only have a handful of people who use those ballots, how do you keep the secrecy, she said. Another staff member later clarified, if a small sample size requested a paper ballot of electors, those electors would go into the records as unique cases and thus their choices would be recorded differently. We know Joe Smith came in and voted on paper, and we know exactly who he voted for, the staff member stated. In addition, Ms. Ritchie told The Standard she had heard very few complaints about the current voting method. A lot of people find the internet and telephone voting method fun. Over the last two years, because of the pandemic, more and more people are turning to computers, internet, and social media with their families, businesses, and personal life, period, she said. 
we have very few people complaining there are no paper ballots. There are quite a few people saying this voting method is great. Despite the issues which delayed the election in 2018 by one day, the city is confident the technology company being used in the election will work well. They have secured connectivity. There will be no six-lane down to two-lane connectivity issue. Everything has been about lessons learned and to make sure they put those in place, Ms. Ritchie explained. The city also has protocols in place should certain areas see mass power or service outages. We have a provision and procedures for emergency. I have the authority to extend the vote like I did last election, Ms. Ritchie said. The last day for voting will be on Election Day, Monday, October 24th. But the city is encouraging voters not to wait until Election Night to vote. Get it in as soon as possible, Ms. Ritchie recommended. Information on how to vote is provided to residents in their voter information package and mailed to all eligible electors. The city is hopeful to have the final results ready somewhere between 9 p.m. and 9.15 p.m. on election night. An attitude of gratitude. There are two diametrically opposite movements taking place currently. First, people are taking great risks, including loss of their lives, in order to enter the U.S. and Canada, often illegally, particularly at the southern U.S. border. Second, people are taking great risks, including the loss of their lives, in order to exit Russia and other authoritarian, oppressive countries so they can live where true freedom is available and even thrives. Recently, in Russia, Putin conscripted 300,000 more people to fight in Ukraine, resulting in families being torn apart as they were given no other options but to leave or face jail. What do these two opposing movements speak to us about? I believe because Canada and the U.S. were founded on Judeo-Christian values which encourage, espouse, and extol God-revering freedom. This has allowed our two countries to thrive as bastions of democracy, imperfect as we may be. That is why it's a dangerous path we travel when the acknowledgement of God is systematically being removed from our social environment, institutions, and general way of life. We must fight with all our hearts against this trend. So, consequently, when we look in depth at godless and undemocratic countries around the world, such as Russia, it's no wonder they are in such bad shape, not just economically, but in every other category as well. We must cherish and protect, with thankful hearts, our great country, because we still can. A word about immigration. It must be a process which is orderly, limited, and controlled legally, with a structure which uses parameters. This is necessary to protect our infrastructure, resources, and institutions from being overwhelmed with unbearable stress and pressures which can cause them to fail, harming everyone, consequently, even the very people who want to immigrate. Without order, we will all feel the brunt and possible collapse of these necessary structures. The Bible says, For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, in 1 Corinthians 14.33. I felt a spirit of conviction as I watched Russian people being savagely arrested and apprehended by Putin's forces simply because they refused to be conscripted for a totally unwarranted, clearly unwanted purpose. I have been apathetic and not appreciative or thankful for the blessing of living in Canada which God has bestowed on me. I am quite sure close to 90% or more of our world has nowhere close to the living standard I have, despite my dwindling bank account. One can travel all around the world and still not experience greater beauty than what we possess in our great country. Our perspective on life will be greatly enhanced when we have an attitude of gratitude, daily, regardless of our often short-term circumstances. In Psychology Today, June 2019, they reported a study showing people who have thankful attitudes as opposed to attitudes of entitlement are happier and live longer. This is good to hear and be reminded of. Interesting. The same information and endorsement were written to us 2,000 years ago in a book known as the Holy Bible. Robert Pullen, Oxbridge. Seniors' mobility means independence. We want seniors to move safely from point A to point B. Tina Y. Gerber McCurley, special to the standard. For many seniors, mobility issues are an uncomfortable side effect of aging and can make daily life challenging. Mobility issues can range from walking, reaching up for everyday items, difficulty using the bathroom, and getting in and out of bed. Over time, these relatively small issues can impact a senior's ability to live independently and can inhibit their quality of life. 
Many seniors' mobility issues can be remedied with walking aids or by making small changes in your or their home to better accommodate their needs. Keeping the home accessible for seniors can also help prevent their mobility issues from interfering with their everyday lives. If you are experiencing moderate to severe mobility disability and need help getting around, you may want to consider a mobility aid. Aids help you to maintain stability and make it easier to do simple tasks like getting up, sitting down, or just walking around the house. Many seniors may require hearing aids, bath chairs, commodes, mobility scooters, rollator walkers, or even a wheelchair. Ideally, seniors should be stretching and exercising to increase their range of motion and ensure their muscles get the exercise they need to stay healthy. Walking is a great way to stay fit. One benefit is added muscle strengthening, enhancing weight management and heart health. Walking can also reduce your risk of disease as you get older. Chronic conditions such as arthritis, diabetes, and edema can cause swelling in the feet. It is important to start with the right shoes for everyday activities. A thick sole and slightly elevated heel cup with a padded collar will keep your ankles comfortable. A contact closure with a Velcro strap gives you a perfect fit. It's important to find a walking shoe designed with versatility, so you may wear them for any purpose. Cycling is another great way for seniors to maintain their mobility. It works out your entire cardiovascular system and is considered low-impact exercise, which helps slow down the aging process. Canes are typically the first line of defense when you notice a change in your mobility. Canes are designed to help support the body by taking some load off your legs and feet. Using a cane can reduce the risk of falling and seriously hurting yourself. They also work to improve balance and stability. To navigate my day-to-day -day life with confidence, I use a cane. I have several wooden walking canes because they provide me with physical stability and mental support, and they help me to be more self-reliant. My mother, for her safety, purchased and had a stair lift installed at her apartment. A stair lift enables a senior to move safely and comfortably between all levels of their home with confidence. It's a device which makes it easier for older individuals experiencing balance issues to get up and down a flight of stairs and is one of the best ways to stay in control of your independent lifestyle. The good news is, many seniors who struggle with mobility can often get the help they need in order to regain enough mobility to stay active inside their own homes. Call your doctor who may prescribe therapies, treatments, or even medications to help a senior regain strength and range of motion. We are not doomed to frailty just because we grow old if we are willing to stay active and make wellness a priority. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper.